coronary blood flow in the ECG. So from the beginning of cardiology, as paramedics were taught, if you've got elevation in too many places, you don't have an MI, right? And we're given lots of different uh, reasons for that. It could be pericarditis or BER, it could be hypothermia or other repolarization abnormalities. So what happens when you have an MI, you have an ST elevated myocardial infarction and there should be elevation in several places. So let's talk about coronary blood flow to understand how it works. So here's a black and white picture because it's explained to us in, in black and white that certain coronary arteries trace certain paths and that's that and that's it and that's represented on the EKG in certain places and that's the end of it. Well, human beings are not anatomically the same from one to the next. It's never been that way. It's not going to start tomorrow. We have different coronary arteries and they can go different places from one heart to the next. So you can have a right coronary artery that wraps around a little further than the other um, person's cor uh, right coronary artery. And you can have a left coronary artery that does the same thing. It can come around all the way to the other side. You can have a left anterior descending that wraps around the bottom of the heart and then begins to reascend up into the posterior wall. So you can see elevation on different parts of an ECG and you can see depression on others where you don't have two separate MIs going on. You've got one arterial occlusion that is branching off into several walls. So a great example of that is the inferior wall where you see elevation two, three in AVF and you see reciprocal depression in one in AVL. And then you look over in V1, V2 and V3 and you have ST segment depression that if you flip the ECG upside down, you know, uh, and backwards and hold it up to a light, it looks like a STEMI. And many people say, well, he had an inferior wall and a posterior wall am I going on. So technically you're not wrong, but there was only one blood vessel blocked. And if the entirety of that posterior wall is showing up on your ECG, this person might have been a right coronary artery dominant person. They might have had a right coronary artery that wrapped around all the way to the back of the heart. So what about when you have major vessels blocked? Do you see elevation? Do you see depression? Do you see elevation everywhere? What should you look for? So let's start with the big one. Let's say the left main coronary artery is blocked, all right? What would you see? So you can look on the slide here. You can see we've, we've cut the left main off right there. All the blood vessels that are now colored black explain all the areas of the heart that are now ischemic, all right? And this is assuming that everything breaks evenly exactly where all the blood vessels are supposed to. We're, we're not even taking into account yet that you might have a left main that goes way further. So here's an ECG from exactly that. <clears throat> so if you have a look here, you can see that there is ST segment depression everywhere. So you see it in one in AVL, you see it in two, three, V4, V5, V6, V3. There's ST segment depression everywhere, but we've got a left main arterial occlusion. This is certainly a transmural MI. It should be a STEMI. It should be an ST elevated myocardial infarction. infarction. And traditionally, it's what we're taught, but it doesn't have to. It does not have to show ST segment elevation when you have a major blood vessel block like that. Remember that the ST segment depression is not just limited to a subendocardial MI. It can mean injury or death of that tissue or late stage infarct. So what you've got is a piece of the heart that, or half of the heart that is completely choked off, all right? So your old charts and things like that that used to tell you, hey, ST segment depression is gonna be indicative of subnocardial ischemia. Maybe when it's limited to certain places, but when it's massive like that, it does not have to be. It can be possible in transmural in injury and it can be seen. So also think in, in other terms that depression in one place can be elevation somewhere else. You, when you have a 12 lead ECG, are looking at a mirror image of the heart. So think back to your posterior MI. So if you have elevation in two, three in AVF, you've got reciprocal depression in one in AVL, you know you've got a right coronary artery that is occluded. And then you look in V2 and V3 on this ECG and some in V1 as well, you see ST segment depression, you flip that upside down, it would be a STEMI, you know you've got a posterior wall MI going on there as well. But why the depression? Because if you put those electrodes on the back of the patient, you would see ST segment elevation because then your electrodes would be facing the back of the heart. So think of it in terms of depression in one place, ST segment depression in one place can mean elevation somewhere else. So just because you see ST segment depression does not mean you're not having a transmural MI. The, the place you're looking from, your vantage point, could be the limiting factor. 
which is why you should always run 15 lead and 18 lead ECGs anytime you see something that doesn't make sense or doesn't really compute. And you also need to take the time to learn the coronary blood flow and how that works and how it can differentiate so that you can be better prepared to see that one thing that looks out of place and be the one on scene who knows, hey, no, this is not out of place. This just happens to be one of those 3% of people or this just happens to be one of those people who's got this dominant coronary artery or et cetera. All right, get out there and practice.